I welcome you to uh, to our headquarters, the home of the people's revolution. <laughs> uh, as you know, uh, this is our headquarters. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, I don't see need to say much because you know more about Zimbabwe <laughs> than we do. <laughs> You've been here for many years, <laughs> so, but welcome back. <laughs> welcome back and your delegation. Uh, you. Let me start by introducing my delegation. Mm. Uh, I'm Patrick Chinamasa, Treasurer General, Treasurer General of Zanu PF. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the Secretary General should have been here, but uh, due to other electoral commitments, yeah, I understand. he's yeah. not able to be with mm -hmm. us today. Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary for External Relations, Comrade Simbarashi Mbengegui, mm -hmm. and a man with whom we have had dealings with the Chinese Communist Party for many years is head of our Chitepo School of Ideology. Uh, we have a very solid relationship mm -hmm. with the Communist Party of China. Sure, sure. And most of our contacts with the Communist Party of China mm -hmm. are through these two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. External mm -hmm. relations and Chitepo School of Ideology. Mm -hmm. uh, to his left is our Deputy Secretary uh, Legal ah, I see. in the Politburo. Okay. Okay. And then the, next to him mm -hmm. is Comrade Douglas Mahia, who is our Secretary for War Veteran Affairs. Mm -hmm. And next to him, our Director General, Comrade Zora. Uh, the next, next to him is Marapira, our director, information mm -hmm. and publicity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then recently recruited is our director in the office of the Secretary General, Ms. Dr. Ma Puvire. Then Comrade Madondo is in our director of our security. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And of course the lady last there mm -hmm. is our protocol, chief protocol here. Okay. Yeah, she's in the Department mm -hmm. of <coughs> External Relations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I welcome you. Now, uh, I've been given this very important uh, task to head the Chinese uh, observation, observation team for the harmonized election uh, in Zimbabwe. And uh, next to me is uh, Mr. Cho, who is counselor in the African Department of the Foreign Ministry of China. And uh, these two guys from the embassy here, <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. Councillor Zhang and uh, the young lady is uh, Miss Tang, and uh, next to to her is uh, Second Secretary in the Foreign Ministry, also African African Department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got a, a small team. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not a big team, not as big as those uh, from other parts of the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, I just see that. Uh, uh, we came here to show my government's, um, that Chin Chinese government gave a lot of importance to the upcoming uh, election in Zimbabwe. We just try to show our support and uh, solidarity with our Zimbabwe friends. Uh, we just hope that uh, the upcoming election will be a very successful one, will be a peaceful, orderly, transparent, and credible one. Yeah. So uh, I feel very happy, extremely happy to have this opportunity to come back to my second home in Zimbabwe. Uh, and uh, I really uh, glad that I can meet our old, my old friends Again, during my tenure of office here, you will give me so much assistance and support, uh, which I should uh, once again express my sincere uh, gratitude and uh, appreciation. Thank you very much, Ambassador Lin Lin. Uh, let me begin by acknowledging that uh, we have been visited by a friend, uh, a strategic friend and all weather friends. We owe much of what we are doing economically to the support that we've been getting from the People's Republic of China, especially in the area of infrastructural development. 
Mm -hmm. I'm sure you are aware that our president recently commissioned Wangi 78, yeah. which has put us for electoral purposes into a very advantageous position. We no longer have load shedding. And I, I think those have been very good news as we enter into the electoral period. So I want to thank the People's Republic of China for this continuing strategic partnership and friendship with the people of Zimbabwe and the government of Zimbabwe. On the party side, like I tried to elaborate, we have a very close working relationship with the communist part of China. We have received a lot of support, especially in the area of training. We have sent young people for training and exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we are very grateful uh, for, for that support. But as you know, in our, under our constitution, we have to periodically go to the people to ask for a new mandate. And so mm -hmm. this is why we have these elections. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, you also know that uh, we have been under sanctions from Western countries for the past 23 years. And uh, there have been machinations to effect regime change against ZANU-PF. But I wanted to assure you, and I'm very glad that we have succeeded to weather that storm. We, they will not succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, we are more united than ever, and uh, we have also achieved economic growth, which goes a long way to meet the needs of our people. And our people now know that uh, we are a people-centered party. Uh, as we go into these elections, our manifesto has, has been our achievements in the past five years. What we've done in the area of education, in the area of health, infrastructure, roads, power, the economy, mining, mm -hmm. we've registered growth in almost every sector of our economy. Thanks to the peace which have prevailed and also, of course, to the support both, both economically and politically from the People's Republic of China. So I welcome you, uh, comrades. Thank you very much for coming. Let me just give you a brief about our uh, elections. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 210 constituencies, National Assembly constituencies, 210. So, and 1,970 local authority seats. These are councillors. So what is in contestation is uh, 1,970 local authority seats and 210 National Assembly seats. The other positions, such as senatorial, uh, women's quota, youth quota, all are dependent on those cast for these candidates. Mm -hmm. Then they will be distributed on a prorata basis between the political parties which are contesting the elections. There are 11 political parties contesting the elections. No, 11 candidates, rather, contesting the presidential position. 11 candidates. I think there are now 10, because one was disqualified. Uh, there are 16 political parties. There were 12. Yeah. Okay. There were 16. There are 16 political parties contesting for the in the in this election, and there are 4,970 or thereabouts candidates contesting for the 210 uh, national assembly seats. Mm -hmm. uh, we started the electoral process with the delimitation last year. This was undertaken. Uh, beginning from May and was concluded about January, February. Uh, this was basically to delimit the constituencies on the basis of population densities. That has been done. Uh, we also have registered an increase 
in our registered voter population. Uh, in the last election, 2018, with 5.8, this time it should be around 6.6 .6 million registered mm -hmm. voters. Mm -hmm. So that exercise was done. It was, uh, uh, should we say, disrupted by COVID. During the COVID period, there was not much that we could do yeah. in terms of yeah. political activity, voter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. registration. Mm -hmm. But uh, the law allowed us that after the cut-off date, we could continue registering voters who would participate in this year's election. And that increased the voter registration, voter uh, registered voter population from 5.8 to 6.6 .6 as we end mm -hmm. this election. Mm -hmm. We held our pri 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 primary elections uh, around February, I think, January, February. Uh, they w it went well. Uh, what, of course, uh, uh, happened in the primary elections that we had a lot of youths winning mm -hmm. the is that not so comrades? There was a large chunk of youths who won the primary elections, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, raises uh, an issue which we are going to discuss with the Communist Party of China. They will need guidance and ideological orientation because uh, we, we feel that uh, this was unprecedented in terms of youth participation. Uh, but that is his job. I'm sure that after the election, you'll be at it. I'm sure you know our party structures. We are organized right from the village, the cell. 50 members make up a village cell. 10 of those village cells make up a branch. 10 branches make up a party district. Mm -hmm. And then we have the province. Uh, we have 10 provinces. Uh, we have also a structure at our administrative districts. Uh, we have 72 of them, 72 district coordinating committees countrywide. Then thereafter, we have the women, the central committee, then the Politburo. We recently introduced in our constitution a new organ, a new structure, which we call Council of Elders. Okay. Uh, it's new. Mm -hmm. And so far, I think mm -hmm. only five members have been appointed to it. And the chairman is someone, you know, Comrade Sekramai. Comrade Sekramai. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this will be advisory uh, to, the, uh, to the party. Over and above our party structures, we have affiliate organizations. <coughs> in, in, and we have 92 organizations which have affiliated to ZANPF. These are mainly interest groups which support ZANPF and support our policies and in many respects help us, are helping us in our, in our campaign. I see. Uh, the prominent affiliate organizations helping us, uh, Forever Associates Trust is helping us, Heritage Trust, uh, largely Heritage Trust, largely members who have retired, uh, war veterans who have retired from the military. Okay. Uh, they formed the Heritage Trust to support and to defend the revolution. And they've been very much active to support us with resources and with logistical and other support, uh, beefing up uh, our strength in, in, that, in that regard. We also have affiliate organizations like well, Young Women for ED, we have uh, uh, miners for ED, uh, from whom we have got quite some some resources. Uh, before we start our campaign, we won about 92 local authority seats unopposed. The opposition were unable to field any candidates, mm. and so we won them uh, unopposed. As to our campaign strategies. Uh, the president can't be everywhere. So we decided that he addresses only provincial star rallies. Uh, there was the national launch in Chipinge, Manikaland. Uh, he addressed that. 
and but this national launch drew participation from right across our party structures countrywide. Uh, then we have provincial star rallies, which we only allow members from that province to attend, and this is addressed by the president. Our last provincial star rally was in Midlands on Saturday, and it went exceedingly well. Mm -hmm. So we have held in all 11 star rallies addressed by the president. A one a national launch and 10 provincial star rallies. Mm -hmm. uh, over and above that, we identified, we did a, a, an assessment of our strength in the various constituencies. And we have designated some constituencies to be red, which means we our support base is shaky. Then some ember, some green. So we are targeting in our campaign, we are targeting those red and ember constituencies. And we have sent our members of the presidium, the vice president, mm -hmm. the two, and the national chair. They are addressing what I call constituency based rallies. Uh, we only allow members, our supporters from that constituency, to attend. Uh, over and above that, of course, we have the candidates themselves, the address rallies at district level, party district level, and we also have polling station based mobilization. Uh, at each polling station, we have a voters row, mm -hmm. and we have identified which of our members in ourselves vote where, and we have teams which are mobilizing basically to raise awareness up among our members where to vote and also to make sure that on voting day on, on Wednesday they come out to go and vote. Mm -hmm. uh, so far uh, the environment has been very peaceful. Uh, we have had provocations from the opposition uh, banning our billboards, provoking incidents of violence but uh, our supporters have heeded our president mm -hmm. that we should not respond to those provocations because they are intended to tarnish us more than to tarnish them. So we have not responded to any provocations which uh, have been uh, made during this campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, women participation uh, left to themselves they, they fare very badly in the primary elections. So we, under our constitution, we introduced the women's quota. Uh, that is six per each province to go into the National Assembly. We introduced a, a zebra system in our senatorial uh, selection of candidates where the woman is at the top of the zebra. Mm -hmm. uh, we also introduced the women's 30% women's quota for local authority. Uh, and this is basically to empower and enhance women participation in the elections. Um, we have been under attack for, uh, from the Western countries, apart from the sanctions. Mm -hmm. During this, from February, we came under attack under social media. Al Jazeera was putting up, put up a, a documentary, basically tarnishing the leadership, uh, uh, spreading falsehoods about ourselves, about ZANU PF, and so on. But I'm happy that uh, those falsehoods have fallen on deaf ears because the people see that these are blatant lies. So we got that, sent uh, documentation, all sorts of social media, they are very active, basically to undermine uh, with a view to effecting regime change. But on our part, we also have had to respond. We have an affiliate organization which is very active on social media to defend the party, to defend the country. And we are satisfied with their performance. Mm -hmm. As you know, we remain under sanctions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We remain under mm -hmm. sanctions. Uh, the opposition uh, asking for the sanctions and they are not asking for the uplifting. They are promising the people that only after they win, 
will the sanctions be lifted. Uh, but fortunately, they will not win. Uh, we introduced a Patriot Act uh, which uh, criminalizes any treasonous acts or utterances against the mother country. Mm -hmm. uh, we introduced that uh, very this year. So anyone who goes about uh, asking harm to happen to Zimbabwe, uh, 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 working in league with foreign forces, uh, we are criminalizing that as, as treasonous. Uh, we have had some litigations. In Blawayo, our ZEC officers accepted opposition, nomination of opposition candidates out of time. The electoral law provides that nominations should be between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. In other words, by the deadline of 4 p.m., the person should be in the nomination court with his nomination paper and the nomination fee. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, they came after and were accepted. So we challenged that, went to court one, but they appealed and uh, they won. We lost that litigation mm -hmm. uh, and we still don't know why. The court did not give any reasons. We'll find out when eventually they give reasons. Uh, the diaspora vote, we are not giving diaspora votes, mm -hmm. and the reasons are that uh, our people are mostly in South Africa, UK, Australia, Canada, uh, United States. Except for South Africa, these other countries impose sanctions on us. And we are not at liberty, ZANU-PF, to send our representatives to go and lobby for their support. Okay. So for that reason, we have said we will not support the introduction of a diaspora vote because to do so now, when we are under sanctions, we will not create an even playing field. Uh, we should be in a position where we can move freely to all countries where our people are mm -hmm. to canvas for their support. And until we have that privilege, uh, that right, uh, we will not support any diaspora vote. Uh, the, there was some litigation around one of the uh, candidates for, for president. Uh, Kasugwe, I think you know. Yeah, yeah. Kasugwe, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone, remember, someone we don't know instituted the litigation. We didn't even know that the electoral law provided that you must, to, be, to remain a voter, you must be in the country continuously for 18 months. If you are away out of the country for more than 18 months, you forfeit your right as a vote. So he was taken to court. The court upheld the application and disqualified him. Mm -hmm. uh, so he is not a candidate in our, uh, in our elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, manifesto. We have said uh, our manifesto is our achievements. Mm -hmm. What we've done over the past five years, that is our manifesto. And it gives confidence to our electorate of what they can expect to happen after. Because there are a lot of our projects which are in the pipeline, a lot of projects that we've completed. Yeah. In all, we did, I think, 7,000 projects which affect the lives of our people. And the people see that and that is basically our manifesto. And those which have not yet been completed, our people are able to see that the, uh, the government will, will take time to, to, to complete. Uh, we expect that there will be no violence. Uh, that is not to say that the opposition is not planning violence. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not our responsibility as ZANU-PF when violence erupts, is the responsibility of law enforcement agencies to make sure that they bring the country to, to peace. Uh, but uh, judging from the speeches from the main opposition leader, we think that is to no good. What he did in 2018 and 2019 may be repeated, but that is not our worry. That is the concern of the law enforcement agents.
But as far as we are concerned, our supporters have heeded the president's call not to respond to any provocations. Mm -hmm. And the atmosphere has been very peaceful. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, Your Excellency, that is what I would want to brief you about our elections. We are expecting a resounding victory. We are expecting that we will bury uh, this neo colonial outfit once and for all. If they rise, it will be another. Uh, fortunately for us, they, they destroyed their own themselves. They have no constitution, no structures. Uh, they have been fighting too much among themselves in the leadership to a point where a lot of the henchmen who were, whom we knew are no longer now have been sidelined. So that works very well for us. Uh, and we are, we are grateful to our, to, 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 to our revolution. So that, uh, Your Excellency, is my brief. Thank you very much. Okay. Comrade Shinamasa, thank you very much for your uh, information about the preparations by the Zimbabwean government for the upcoming election and also the uh, mobilization work done by ZADU-PF uh, to join this process. Uh, as I said that China as a long-term friend, traditional uh, friend of uh, Zimbabwe, we would like to see uh, a successful election, harmonized election uh, in the next few days. And uh, since our arrival here, well, as you said, we, we find that the atmosphere is quite peaceful and very calm, which is, I think is uh, very good for the election. And uh, uh, this time, uh, we saw that you have also invited uh, observers from not only AU, uh, SADC countries, but also from EU, which is still had imposed some sanctions in, in uh, Zimbabwe. I think that shows that uh, uh, your confidence in the upcoming election and uh, you've got no hidden agenda, no, nothing to hide from the other parts of the world. Uh, well, from my experience, I sincerely, uh, I simply believe that uh, uh, once this election will be a peaceful, uh, a fair and uh, a transparent and a credible one. Because I was here in uh, 2013, for at that time, the election goes on uh, quite smoothly. And I was told that uh, five years ago, uh, the, the, the election also uh, uh, went on well. So, well, it's, it's, it's normal uh, for any such kind of uh, big event. You have some problems uh, here or there, but, but I believe that, uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, those uh, defects will not affect the, the, the results of the uh, election. So I expect the same thing will happen uh, this year. And uh, of course, Zalo PF as the uh, ruling party for the uh, last, f yeah, more than four decades. So you have got a lot of experience uh, in uh, managing all these kind of things. And uh, I'm very happy to learn that uh, uh, in the past five years, the government has made a lot of achievements in social and economic uh, development, and uh, I'm extremely happy that China has made uh, a lot of contribution, made its due contribution in this process. And 
quite a few major projects have been completed in the past uh, five years, like the uh, Wangi Unit 7 and 5 expansion project, the Mugabe International uh, Airport, the upgrading of the airport, and uh, yeah, and uh, some other Kariba South, Kariba South uh, hydropower station, uh, and we also built a national pharmaceutical warehouse uh, after this this uh, COVID uh, period, which I believe also uh, will help our Zimbabwe friends in overcome those uh, difficulties. So uh, I should say that, that uh, our cooperation has been quite fruitful in the past uh, five years. And uh, what China wish is that uh, Zimbabwe people can make better and new achievements after this election. Uh, all the parties can work together after this election for the betterment uh, of the country, of the people. And China would uh, continue to uh, make its contribution uh, for Zimbabwe's social and economic development. would like to work together with the new government uh, uh, for better cooperation between our two countries. And we know that uh, Zimbabwe have come across uh, many challenges and uh, difficulties. And one of the reasons is that uh, some countries still uh, keep the, those sanctions against uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, and China has been working together with some other uh, international members for those countries to lift the uh, sanctions. And we'll continue to do that. And uh, uh, well, I know that in the past uh, few years, there are a lot of contacts between my pres Chinese President Xi Jinping and His Excellency Mr. Uh, President uh, Mnangagwa. And uh, with the strategic guidance of those, uh, these two leaders, uh, we have achieved a lot and uh, we have actually uh, forged a, strategic, a comprehensive strategic partnership of cooperation between our two countries, which has actually enhanced our uh, bilateral ties to a new high. So uh, let me assure you, uh, my dear friends, that uh, no matter who wins in this upcoming election, uh, China will continue to uh, maintain its good relations, its uh, good cooperation with our Zimbabwe friends. Uh, we'll take it as a new start for our uh, future relations. And uh, uh, once again, I would uh, sincerely wish that uh, this harmonized election a big success. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.